What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So we just finished the Diablo uh, for season three campfire chat. We had a lot of discussion with my lovely community over here. Love all of them so much. We talked about a lot of things. So <clears throat> I pretty much just wanted to recap this and just kind of give you guys my final thoughts. I'm going to try to not make the video too long because I know a lot of people don't want to see that. They can go watch this. I'll link this down in the description below if you guys want to watch it uh, in its entirety. The Q&A was kind of a joke and... Just some, there's just some other stuff that I kind of mentioned here um, in the results, which we'll talk about that they kind of just discussed, so you guys don't have to see that here. But there is some good things, some bad things, and then some worse things. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with some of the good things, and then I'll give kind of like a big recap of my final thoughts. Um, the biggest good thing is that we actually got some really good class balancing changes, some vampiric powers, and then a live gauntlet showcase. So um, the first thing that we're going to highlight is the returning vampiric powers. This is very, very good. We're getting six of them back. They're not going to be one-to-one -one copies, meaning they're not going to be the exact same that uh, same exact power and how it worked from season two. So we are going to be getting them, and they're going to be legendary powers instead of a unique item, which is really good. Um, this is great because that way we just have more legendary powers and not all of our builds are just going to have all unique items. This is a big thing. So our six powers that we are getting back are the uh, Accursed Touch, Blood Boil, Hectic, Metamorphosis, which is a community favorite, Moonrise, and Undying, which is also a community favorite. Uh, my favorite ones, obviously, are Metamorphos, Undying, then Blood Boil for the Overpower. The Accursed Touch is a weird one, but they did just kind of redo it. So if you take a look here, a curse touch on a lucky hit we got a chance for your skills to inflict the curse um and then the curse will release the souls to do some increased damage we got blood boil which is awesome when we overpower we drop three blood drops and the blood drops explode every 20 seconds we get the additional overpower this is probably going to be one of the strongest ones out of all six powers of course undying is really nice when you cast a skill you heal and you double it when you're while you're below 50 percent super super strong and then of course um, we're, we'll talk about Metamorphos in just a sec, but we got Moonrise, which I really like. They've been really harping on the like basic skill stuff, which I think is great. So this is really good. And then we got Hectic, which I actually forgot about what this did. But now that we're casting five basics, one of your active cooldowns gets reduced. This is going to be really nice for basic. These two combined for basic attack builds, like on the Druid or on um, Arclash with the Sork, is going to be really powerful. Now, Metamorphos is a... Um, this is a big change from season two. So when you evade, you turn into the cloud of bats, just like normal. You become unstoppable for two and a half seconds. Enemies along your way are going to take physical damage and then are, uh, are inflicted with a curse. So this combined with a curse touch is going to be really good. But the back end is your evade cooldown is increased by five seconds. So if you guys are been playing season three, you know there's Juggernaut, which increases it by five seconds, which actually puts your evade to seven seconds in totality. So this is going to make you have an in seven second cooldown on evade. So we'll have to play with this and see really how good this is. But it is nice that they're bringing it back because this was probably one of the best vampiric powers from last season. So I hope they do stuff like this uh, in the future with more powers from future seasons. Uh, Mid-season updates. Now, they are sticking to their guns, guys. They're not nerfing uh, basically anything. They are providing some buffs. So, as you guys may have seen from the title, we are too weak. We must bu buff Barbarian. So, um, before we get into the um, class balancing changes, snapshotting, which is something that's been happening a lot since Season 1, where snapshotting is you go in, you put a power in from your inventory onto your character, you go into the dungeon or whatever you're doing, you get the bonus, then you swap it out for the other power, and then you're still able to keep that power throughout the entirety of like running a dungeon, for example. So <clears throat> shout out to my boy, Rod. I don't want to shout, you know, like it's not to bring any negative attention to him, big fan, but Rob had an entire bottom row of snapshotting powers, puts them all on, goes into training, takes them all off. Now you have all those buffs from like six powers and then you're just doing two trillion damage. So uh, their main thing is that they are gonna wanna remove this from the game, so I hope that they get to that soon because it makes playing the game a little silly, as it were. Now let's get to the, pla the class uh, updates, which I know all of you are here for. So first, let's start with the seasonal uh, or construct, our companion here. 
So they're basically doing it to where the companion can no longer double, triple, quadruple, and have unlimited damage scaling with things on the, the skills and you know, like the poison support, bleeding, burning, etc. Which is how we were able to do billions of damage with the um, or even just millions of damage with your companion. So all that is getting nerfed should uh, kind of just level out and still be really good for you. You're still going to have major support, but they did uh, kind of nerf all of that. Now let's get into black class updates. So again, like I said, there is no nerfs coming. Only buffs. We are so weak. We must must buff Barbarian. So Barbarian is getting a buff to underuse skills, uh, ground stomp, etc. Iron skin, fortify amounts. The uh, devastating grips are getting so whirlwind is actually better. They are buffing some really strong things because the Barbarian is very powerful. They're not planning to nerf charge. Um, they're open to feedback, but they are buffing many basics to make the leveling experience for Barbarian just even better. Okay. Uh, Sork. We're getting an incinerate buff. I said this during this live watch. Nobody cares about incinerate, but it is getting a damage buff. I think this number needs to be like 200% for it to actually matter. Um, one big issue still with the dot builds is that they can't crit, which is a real problem. So... I don't know if 40% is really going to make incinerate that much better, but we are getting a buff in all of its thing, the basic enhanced as well as the greater and destructive. So that's kind of cool for us Sork mains. Buffs to conjurations as well as underused passive and glyphs. They didn't really expand on this, but we are getting small ones. Let's go to Druid. <clears throat> this is actually really interesting. I'm kind of excited for it. So similar to Barbarian, they're getting early game buffs, especially with Spirit Generation. Uh, which is a big issue for druid and barbarian in the early levels so we're getting a big buff to wind shear which is nice but they are buffing uh wolves poison creeper and ravens in continuation to companions unique which is going to give a buff to the damage here a really good example of this they bring a nice little showcase here this is season 3.0 and then this is the mid-season buff you can see the damage increase it is a huge amount so maybe just maybe we'll be able to have druid companions i don't know maybe it'll work i'm not sure we'll have to test it and see but it is big buffs there. kind of excited about it so rogue a uh, few things here rogue heart sequel and force for arrow are getting their attack speeds increased by 20 percent they said it feels much closer but adam jackson does say that they are basically the exact same and feel and attack speed as puncture so that way we're not using puncture in every single build for rogue but we'll have other options like heart seeker and forceful arrow we'll have to test that and just see um next we got flurry buffs which is i'm excited about flurry i've always liked more than twisting blades but <clears throat> we'll see if the 10 percent damage buff is uh is like enough we're getting all exact patch notes for everything tomorrow guys so we'll release that video when it comes out Precision stacks are going to be reduced from six to four. The rhythm of getting the proc should feel better. So that way we should get it more often and in rotation with our skills, especially with like penetrating shot, which will be really nice. Um, after that, we got aspect of branching volley. I actually forgot what this does because I don't play volley. But so the change now, I wish Adam Jackson, please, if you watch this, just give us multi shot, please just give us multi shot. So this is the old. Arrows have a 25% chance to split whenever they ricochet. Now we're going to get increased damage of the ricochet um, arrows from Barrage from 40% up to 80. And then the arrows have up to a 60% chance to split whenever they ricochet. So hopefully this will make it feel like multi-shot. I don't know, but we'll see. Excited for that. Uh, now, onto the biggest buffs besides Barbarian because we're too weak and we must buff Barbarian. Finally, four seasons later, we're finally getting minion buffs. We are getting minion buffs. I'm super excited about it. I haven't played Necromancer in a season and a half, almost two seasons, because it's literally Bone Spear or nothing. Micro Boy may disagree, but it's basically Bone Spear or nothing. So we're getting a lot of minion buffs. We're getting uh, just straight buffs across the board to damage and health. Hellbent Commander damage bonuses increase. Same thing with Cult Leader. Union Minions deal more. This is a passive, a glyph. And then we fix an issue with the Skeleton Reapers. Not basically when they have the node where they slash somebody and spawn a corpse. They buff that. That's good. They're doing more in Season 4, which is absolutely fantastic. 
The next big thing here is that we're getting buffs to underused passives. This is great. They are doing a complete rework to Death's Reach key passive, or not key passive, excuse me, regular passive. They're changing it from Death's Reach, which was um, distant damage to Death's Advance, which is giving the Necromancer move speed finally. So this is gonna be a key passive where you can get up to 12% increased move speed. Now there is some additional move speed that you're gonna be able to get here with the Necromancer. Where is it at? Um, they mentioned that you are right here. So you and your minions deal 10% increased physical, and you're also going to gain 1% movement speed for each active. If memory serves, you can get nine with your five skeletons, four mage or three mages plus a golem. Then if you have the powers where you get two more skeletons and two more mages, that puts you to what was that? 12, eight. Yeah, 12. So you get 12% increased move speed on top of the distance, which is another 12%. Then if you put movement speed in your amulet and boots, you are going to be flying as a necromancer. I'm very excited about this. Also, blood buffs to Blight, Blood Surge, and Sever. Sever is my favorite, but we'll see if it's actually good. Okay. Um, so this I'm not going to talk about because that was silly. Uh, and then they get into a lot of discussion here. But more importantly, we actually get to see a live uh, showcase of the gauntlet. So I'm going to talk about this as it's just kind of playing in the background for you guys. So we got to see Bone Spear. Next is Ball Lightning as well as Hoda Barb, which is Hoda slash Charge. Uh, it's the same map and we kind of got to see how this works. So essentially the gauntlet we all know is going to be the same map for one week. It'll change after one week is over. You are going to have the monsters in the same exact spot. This includes your bosses. You're also gonna have the shrines in the same exact spot. There's an array of different shrines. Now, how the gauntlet works is you're gonna have the timer. You're gonna spend the entire time in this timer trying to rack up the highest score possible, okay? When you're going through this, you're gonna have all these different shrines here that are gonna give bonuses, all right? The more monsters that you slay, the higher your score is going to be. Now, there is some additions here, and this is where the RNG actually comes in, all right? So up here, you can notice that there's keys, okay? There's keys. When you're going through the gauntlet, you have to kill specific enemies, and those enemies are going to drop a key. You can see on the map here that there's these chests whenever he actually gets by a chest. And when you use, uh, you can use a key to open up these chests. It's one key per chest. When you open up the chest, it is going to increase your score. Now, the Necromancer actually ends up doesn't getting one. The Sorceress, I think, got two. And then the Barbarian run, or no, the Sork got four. And then the Barbarian got two, I believe, in these runs. You can check it out in the uh, the video down below and the, the link. But it looks like that the normal smaller chests give about 3,000 to your score. And then the bigger chests, which are the gold chests, are going to give anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000, increasing your score. So this may change when you're doing your ladders, your position on the ladder, if you get it. But this is the only, <clears throat> excuse me, the only RNG factor. Okay, from what we saw today, what they were talking about, the keys is the only RNG factor. They do not always drop. So that's just kind of the meat and potatoes of the gauntlet they talk about a lot of strategy trying to figure out your particular route etc but i do want to just kind of flash forward here uh to the barbarian steven stewart for those who do not know is leviathan he's a big uh, name in the community he put together this bar build I, I i don't know what they're talking about as far as a lot of strategy the all he did was basically on the map just go in a big giant circle kill the enemies because they respawn after you kill them after x time we don't know what that time is but they do respawn all he did was just continue to go in a big circle and kill mobs so i don't know what kind of strategy it is but i will tell you that you're going to need a combination of speed enough strength uh, to kind of destroy these now they are only t70 um equivalent monsters as you can see up here it's 124 that's equivalent of doing a nightmare dungeon t70 so just keep that in mind you're gonna be able to access these very easily They're, they don't seem to be too difficult it is literally that it is just a race you're just going to be racing to try to get excuse me the best score 
to see on the leaderboards. Now, I will scroll down to the end here um, just so you can see what happens at the end of a run. You can see right here, this is what happened after completing the trial. It gives you your rewards, your total score, the monsters you killed, elites, and bosses. None of them actually clicked the leaderboards, which is kind of a bummer. I really wanted to see um, how the leaderboards actually look. Even though we got a glimpse earlier in the video, um, we got a glimpse of this right here, I believe. Yeah, we got to see our score here. You got to see like a glimpse of the actual like leaderboard itself, which is kind of nice, right? So you can see this. Now, one additional thing that I like that they added to this, which is what um, you will you can see in Diablo 3, is that on the leaderboards themselves, you can actually see uh, the players and you can actually click and see what builds they're actually using for their run, which is something I really enjoyed. So like if this guy was number one, you can click, see the build that he used, the powers, etc. cetera. Um, now they, that's what they said. I hope that stays true because that way you can kind of see, oh, Eckhart did it, you know, the, it got the highest score. It's awesome. What was he using? Allows you to really kind of just theory craft a little bit better, use some different things that maybe you haven't used, etc. So very, very excited about that. Um, now in the background, I'll just kind of let this roll. After that, they got into a lot of Q&A and just talks. So I just kind of want to bring this up as that's playing. So this is kind of what we had, guys. We had a checklist and we just kind of talked about some of the stuff that we hope that they would go over in here, which was, you know, kind of neat. Um, we didn't get all of it. Unfortunately, we only got a couple things, but it was still pretty cool. Nonetheless, um, they didn't talk about itemization in any way. We got the gauntlet release date, the powers, etc. So here's the results. We are getting a PTR, PTR. We're getting a PTR for season four. Super excited about that. We're gonna get this for season four. We're getting another campfire stream, which is gonna discuss the PTR as well as end game changes that are coming to the game. They were very uh, heavily hinting at that. So we're finally getting a PTR. However, it is PC only on Bnet. If you are a console player, you will not have access to that RIP console. Um, yeah, so you have to be on Battle.net. You cannot be on Steam. You have to own a copy of this on Battle.net to be able to participate in the PTR. So that's very important. <clears throat> One other thing, all the backlash from Uber Trading. They did dumb it down from 5 to 1 to 4 to 1. So I'll let you make your outrages about that in the comments or on the subreddits, etc. Gauntlet release is next Tuesday, guys, is when the Gauntlets will release finally. So you'll be able to start playing. Uh, the second campfire stream will be coming a bit later. We have no date for this, but it will discuss the PTR, everything you need to know, as well as the end game stuff. And then, of course, we got all the barb buffs that we need because barb is so strong and we are so weak that we must buff the barbarian some more. So that is the recap, guys. It is uh, pretty cool. The gauntlet seemed awesome if you really want to race. Um, yeah, that's all the recap, guys. In the end, this is, was a subpar campfire. There's some things that I liked and some things that I didn't like. Um, some of the buffs were good, especially to Necromancer. Um, I wish some of the other classes got some better buffs, but it is what it is. That's okay. We'll look to Season 4. I'm pretty disappointed that we didn't get any talk about itemization, but it looks like they're going to talk about that more in the other campfire stream which is great. The uh, Uber unique trade from five to one to four to one is really bad. Uh, the gauntlet upside seems pretty cool. Um, we'll have to see how it goes, but it seems exciting. Something to really test and just have fun. Another end game mechanic, which would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, overall it's, we're like half a step forward, two steps back. So that's, kind of my final thoughts like the video guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think about all this again i'll link the entire dev stream if you guys want to go watch it uh but that's just kind of a real quick recap we're gonna have some more details again tomorrow um when the official patch notes are released so we'll have some more details uh but yeah comment down below let me know what you guys think remember have good criticism don't just say d4 bad that doesn't really get anywhere in a conversation so have some good criticisms let me know what you guys think and don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace